It's 20 minutes to nine on ABC South East. Now, the minutes of Labor Party caucus meetings are normally kept secret, so eyebrows were raised recently when they were leaked to the Herald Sun newspaper, and they showed division within the party over the decision to pass the enabling legislation of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a huge global trade deal. Labor's skills and apprenticeship spokesman Doug Cameron was quoted speaking out against the decision and Senator Cameron joins me now in the studio. Senator Doug Cameron, good morning. Morning, Simon. What are your concerns about the Trans-Pacific <clears throat> Partnership? Well, look, I've uh, had concerns about these so-called free trade agreements for a number of years. They're not really free trade agreements. Technically, they are bilateral preferential trade agreements. So people trade off bits and pieces, and it's not true free trade. And I've always been concerned that you know workers need to be considered, the social impact needs to be considered, as well as the economic impact. So why is Labor preparing to let it sail through Parliament? Because it's been to the caucus, and the caucus has made a decision that, on balance, uh, that they would support the uh, TPP. Um, I don't think it was as much division in the party as basically people voicing, you know, a legitimate concern, proper debate, good debate in the caucus. And uh, unfortunately, I was on the wrong side of the, the argument, as I am on a number of occasions. But I understand uh, Labor has decided to amend the legislation after the fact, if Labor has the numbers in Parliament after the next decision. Why do that rather than blocking it now? Are you just giving up on the argument? Well, I, again, it was on this on balance that we want the, you know, the capacity for our exports to increase. Uh, we want uh, to, to deal with that uh, quickly. Uh, but any of the negatives, uh, the party has decided that we'll deal with them in government. We'll try and renegotiate some of the worst aspects of it. Now, uh, in part of the, the leaked uh, quotes from you in, in caucus, uh, you said that the politics are that working class people are insecure and Pauline Hanson is manipulating their insecurity. It's time we took a different view. Did you, are you still worried about the impact that is going to have and Pauline Hanson being able to say that Labor is letting working class people down? Uh, look, I'm, I'm worried about you know having Pauline Hanson, Hanson in the Senate. I've seen her antics in the Senate and I just think it's an absolute disgrace. I don't think there's any room for racism in this country. I don't think there's room for dividing the community. I think people should be working together to make a better uh, society, not to uh, use you know, fear and, and uh, racism as the basis of your political campaign. I just think it's wrong. But if she's prepared to, to stand up on the TPP, whereas Labor is just going to wait until after the next election, does that create concerns for you, I guess, in terms of representing Labor's base at the next election? Well, politics are all about balance. And when people see our policies on health, on education, on workers' rights, uh, I think they'll understand that Labor is the best uh, to form a government uh, at the next election. And uh, certainly we want to ensure that people have got decent rights in this country, that they've got access to a decent hospital system, that the education system is there for everyone. And I'm very, and Labour is very, very supportive of an independent uh, ABC that can actually operate without the political interference that we've seen recently. Is Labour, do you think Labour's getting a bit timid when it comes to representing workers' rights. So, I mean, News Corporation is keen to paint Labor as being very close to, you know, the thugs in the union movement. Yeah. Do you think there is a problem there uh, that Labor is, is responding to in a, in a bad way? Well, look, I was a union official for 27 years and I, I just can't, uh, you know, uh, un understand this argument about thuggish behaviour. Uh, I was a leader of the AMWU. We had tough negotiations uh, to make sure that our members get decent wages and decent conditions. The problem is now that when I was a union official, I had decent rights of entry to look after workers. That's gone. Uh, I had the capacity to negotiate effectively on behalf of workers. That's gone. And that's why there's frustration in the trade union movement. If somebody gets hurt, you know, sometimes you, you just can't get access to help those workers. And I just think that's wrong. Do you think industrial relations should be uh, an, a big election issue? Are you confident that, it's, um, that Labor will take up the fight? 
Yeah, I'm pretty confident that Labour understands that we can't continue to have wage stagnation. You can't have massive profits by, you know, multinational corporations operating in Australia, massive profits by local businesses, and that not being reflected back in the wages of working people. Some workers are battling to put food on the table for their kids. That's not good enough. OK, now you've been, you're here in the South East, you've been uh, travelling around with uh, Labor's candidate for the state seat of Bega, Leanne Atkinson. Yep. What are you hearing uh, from local people? Well, firstly, I think Leanne's a great candidate and it's about time we had a change of, uh, uh, can of uh, member down here. Uh, the feedback that I'm getting is the real concerns about the future of TAFE. I'm Shadow Minister for TAFE skills and apprenticeships. Uh, we don't want to see the, the bigger TAFE college closed down. We want to ensure that uh, young people have got an opportunity to learn uh, skills in the area. And if there is a snowy 2.0, we want to train the people to work on it in this area. And you can't do that if you close the TAFE system down. And uh, we just think that TAFE is so important. And Leanne and Mike Kelly are really uh, supportive of uh, continuing TAFE. We've got a number of policies in relation to TAFE. We've this, we've, we say that TAFE should be the anchor of the vocational education system. We are putting $100, uh, uh, $100 million into refurbished TAFEs across the country. Mike Kelly has been uh, talking to me about what we could do to refurbish and assist TAFE in this area because TAFE is where you know working class kids go to get an education. The recent study I've seen shows that about 14% of working class kids go to university, but about 60% go to TAFE. And TAFE is where the funding cuts have been under coalition governments, and we've got to turn that around. But why is Labor talking about the government closing down the TAFE college in Bega when what they're actually doing is building a, a brand new state-of-the-art facility? Well, no, well, the state-of-the-art facility is not really a, you know, a, a, a traditional TAFE facility. And wherever they have been built separate from the TAFE, the TAFE ends up being closed down. So we're very concerned about that. And it's just, it's like, you know, self service in the supermarkets. People lose jobs and uh, people lose an income. If you have these sort of self service centres off the TAFE, we're concerned that the TAFE will be uh, uh, closed down, and that's what's happened in a couple of other regions. OK, now back to federal issues. And you mentioned uh, the ABC already. Uh, we saw yeah. the shock news this week, yeah. the managing director, uh, Michelle Guthrie, being removed. And this morning, revelations in the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, or claims at least, that a Malcolm Turnbull complaint about yeah. Emma uh, led to uh, the ABC chairman, Justin Milne, telling Michelle Guthrie to sack her. What are your views on that? I think it's outrageous and I think it's typical of this government, the, the coalition government. They have placed their uh, apparatchiks in so-called independent organisations such as the Registered Organisation Commission, the ABC, C, the Fair Work Ombudsman. They put their people in and they don't operate independently. And it's clear that the Chairman Milne uh, was operating on the uh, uh, the say-so of the former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and I think that Emma Alberici is one of the best journalists we have in this country and the attacks that have been on her and the ABC generally are outrageous. We think the ABC is an absolute icon in this country and the ABC should be supported. We will return the, the cuts to the ABC, the funding cuts, because we want a clearly independent ABC. You know, I don't come here and expect to get uh, any, you know, uh, uh, treatment that uh, is uh, not fair and, and equal. I don't, you should not be treating me, you know, because I'm a senator any different to any other interviewer. Uh, and that is exactly what we're getting now when, you know, the ABC is attacked. Uh, by the government. It's not a good look and it's not a good thing for this country. I imagine now as a period of reflection for you as you come to the end of, what, 10 or 11 years in yeah. the Senate, you won't yeah. be uh, standing again. Uh, what would you say your, your greatest uh, achievement is and, and also your, your greatest regret or, or failing? <clears throat> 
Look, uh, I, I've been very fortunate in the 11 years I've been in, uh, in uh, the Parliament. I think the greatest achievement was being part of a government that uh, acted in, a, in an appropriate manner, you know, timely, targeted and temporary support for communities who were facing huge problems through the global financial crisis. That is undoubtedly one of the best responses around the world uh, in terms of the global financial crisis. I've always been a strong supporter of workers having decent rights uh, to bargain and negotiate, and I've taken that view consistently in Parliament, uh, looking after working people, working families, giving them an opportunity to get a better education, giving them an opportunity to have, to have decent health facilities, to uh, oppose the Abbott 2014-15 budget that was going to cut you know, $80 a week from pensions. Young kids would, uh, who were unemployed would have no income for six months. Being part of a collective Labour, Labour opposition and a government who did good things, I think is an excellent uh, 10 or 11 years in Parliament. Was there something you set out to achieve or were determined to achieve that you failed at? Well, I mean, is there, a, a, I guess, a mission for whoever takes your place? Yeah, I uh, look. I just uh, I've always been a voice for for working families. Uh, that's what I took the view. I thought there was too many voices in Parliament that basically pushed the big business uh, approach and uh, and that workers weren't getting a fair go. And I've been consistent in my support for working families. And uh, Tim Ayers, who is replacing me <coughs> as a as a senator, has got similar views to me that workers need support in Parliament, workers need a voice in Parliament, and hopefully I have been that voice for the last 11 years, along with many of my other colleagues. Okay, uh, what politics has changed, no doubt, in the yeah. time you've been there. Uh, we saw the Rudd Gillard Rudd years. Um, I think voters didn't really like that and now the coalition has kind mm. of taken uh, notes out of that playbook yeah. and once again voters don't like it. What's gone wrong? I mean, you can blame the media or social media. Uh, That's not going to... You can only blame yourself. Uh, you know, and I, uh, you know, it wasn't... When Labour was last in government, we made many mistakes. And I thought that the coalition would have learned from those mistakes because we have learned from those mistakes. Uh, you know, we have been an absolutely cohesive uh, opposition focused on the real issues for working families. And to watch the, the, uh, the, the Abbott, uh, Turnbull, Morrison government pull themselves apart, I just think is crazy. Um, you know, they should have learnt the lesson from us. The public don't like this disunity. And Bill Shorten has brought a unity to the, the Labour Party that is way ahead of anything you've seen in the coalition. And we've focused on the key issues for working families, build a better society, give them more security. But, but has something gone wrong in politics? What's that a response to in Labour's case and uh, look, the coalition? I mean, yeah, has uh, politics look, changed? Look, I wasn't a politician, you know, you know, I've been a politician for 11 years. But what I keep hearing is that there is this sort of 24-hour news cycle and it's always got to be filled and the pressure's on, you know, people on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the pressure is on leaders more than has ever been. Uh, and that is a media... In I'm not blaming the media, but that's a fact of the media. Mm. And uh, I think some people just can't handle it. That uh, around-the-clock scrutiny? Around-the-clock scrutiny, everything you say is you know, looked at, and I've got to say, the, the murder press, the Australian, are an absolute disgrace. Uh, you know, they are just, you know, pushing an agenda from Rupert Murdoch. If Rupert Murdoch doesn't like the Prime Minister, they, t they turn all their guns on that Prime Minister, whether it's Labour or Liberal. And I just think it's a, a, a real problem for democracy in this country that the, uh, uh, the, the uh, media is so focused on that basis and that's why it's absolutely essential that we have a change in the leadership in the ABC, uh, that Milne should go, that we should get a truly independent uh, chairman and we have an ABC that can prevent, present the facts unbiased 
and in the interests of the community. You're calling for him to go. Don't you want to wait and see what his response to this is and for, for him to respond to these claims? Uh, look, I think it's clear that he was put in there as a mate of Malcolm Turnbull. He was doing Malcolm Turnbull's bidding, and that is not what the ABC should be. The chairman and the board have got a responsibility to act independently. I think it's quite clear that Milne has not done that, and I think he should go. And I think the ABC are far too important to be treated in this political manner by the coalition and their apparatchiks on the board.